obesity is a common problem. Um, and if uh, weight loss and other behavioral therapy doesn't work, there are medications that doctors might consider using. One of the medications that's approved for the treatment of obesity is called cybutramine or meridia. Now, meridia works by blocking the way in which the body inactivates a couple of hormones called norepinephrine and serotonin. And they are very much involved in the control of appetite. So if you can control the hormones that are involved in appetite, you can have an effect on weight loss. So it turns out that if you give this treatment, on average, patients might lose around four kilograms of weight in three months or six months. If you add behavioral treatment, where a patient meets with a dietitian and a psychologist and is instructed on weight loss measures, the medication is even more effective and people might lose five or six kilograms in three months. And what we found was that there are three proteins that are controlled by the genes that influence the way in which weight loss occurred in response to treatment. So if we inherited the genes um, in a certain pattern, patients lost between six and eight kilograms in weight. Whereas if they had a, a different type of gene that they had inherited, those patients lost a negligible amount of weight. Now, the implication of this study is that it might help us select patients for this type of treatment. And it might also help us make the treatment, therefore, more cost-effective from a public health perspective. In general, because there's a wide variation in the response to treatment, um, from clinical trials we know that people may lose as little as you know, half a kilogram of weight in three months, or they may lo lose 10 kilograms of weight in three months. And therefore, for that reason, because it's not easily predictable how much weight people will lose, third-party payers often have restrictions on who would be allowed to try this medication for weight loss. Yeah. We are hoping that by understanding the genetic control of responsiveness to therapy, it might afford third-party payers and therefore patients a better way to select who would be eligible and who might be expected to lose a clinically significant amount of weight. One of the ways in which we expected cybutramine to work would have was, in, in fact, that it would affect the way in which the stomach emptied. But it turned out that in this study we were not able to um, show that it delayed stomach emptying. So uh, we believe that the effect of cybutrium is probably uh, through its effects on the appetite center in the mm. base of the brain rather than by slowing down stomach emptying and making people feel, feel full because their stomach isn't emptied fast enough. So the amount of weight people lost in the study overall was typical of what you'd see in the literature. And the, this, is, this medication has been tested and studied okay. for the last 15 years or so. Um, the proportion who actually lost weight was about 60% of the patients who received the medication. Um, but what's, what's more relevant is the ones that had the certain type of uh, genetic makeup lost the weight, whereas the ones who didn't have that type of gene for each one of these three um, genes, um, uh, you know, did or did not lose weight depending upon what gene they had. And this takes us into this era of indiv individualizing or personalizing our prescription for patients on the basis of the way in which their genetic makeup may predispose to responsiveness to a drug or not responding.